So we all watched in horror <laughs> as Bernie Sanders <laughs> endorsed Hillary Clinton. Now, if you look at the videos that we did about the endorsement, we did three or four of them. Uh, we broke down his speech where he endorsed Hillary Clinton, and we were all surprised at the stuff he was saying because he was saying, hey, she's for, she's for a public option. We we're like, what? I never heard that. Hey, she's for letting people 55 uh, and older buy into Medicare. We're like, really? She's for, hey, she's she's committed to free college for uh, poor and middle income people. She's committed to that. He said, yeah. Well, I didn't any of the all this stuff I didn't know she kept saying. Right. He kept saying all this stuff that she's on board for. We were like, I never heard that. Right. Remember that? Yeah. So I was and I'm like, well, if she's for all that stuff. That's pretty. That I could see at Bernie's end. He says our platform is the most progressive platform in Democratic history. But the problem I have with the platform is that it's still pro fracking, mm -hmm. and I can't vote for pro fracking. It's still pro TP, and I can't vote. That's not my party. My party that those. Mm. So and there's a couple other things in there too. I'm just I just can't cotton to. I can't get on board. Right. So uh, Ralph Nader was on with Jorge Ramos, and they asked him. What do you, uh, do you, did you think that Hillary Clinton was looking for a coronation? And here's what uh, Ralph Nader had to say, not only about that, but about Bernie's endorsement. Well, she was until Bernie Sanders came along. And I think his endorsement today mm -hmm. was very dignified. He basically didn't slobber over her. He, he, he basically uh, went through all the promises she made in response to his pressure on student aid, on immigration reform, on minimum wage, uh, on uh, criminal justice reform, on environment and climate change. I thought it was a really brilliant statement. I have it here. Yeah. I urge everybody to read it because he set her up for political betrayal, which would allow him to in, 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 in enlarge his civic mobilization movement uh, after the election and after she takes office. So I think it's a very astute uh, endorsement. It so what he's saying is that what Bernie Sanders was actually doing was setting Hillary Clinton up because he knows that all those things he said she was for, she ain't really for it, and she's going to betray his words, right? Do you follow that? Mm -hmm. Everyone follows that? Yes. Okay. And so then when she does that, he can then, boom, enlarge his organization that he's created. That's according to Ralph Nader. He can enlarge his civic organization, and that'll help enlarge his movement. Because, look, I was playing ball. She's not. She's going against everything we said. Ah, it's not my mo Maybe that is what he's doing. Uh, I, I have to think that's what he's doing because I kept saying, again, if you watch the videos of how we, <laughs> we interpreted his speech, I kept saying, boy, he's giving a very generous reading to Hillary's position. Remember that? I was saying she's really for that. She's for ending private prison. She's for all this stuff, right? Whether it, Bernie's doing that intentionally, it's definitely what's going to happen. Like, that's the effect that will come out of... Yeah. Because she will fail to get any of those things passed if she tries. And we were all pretty sure she's... If she even bothers trying, they're going to be from compromised positions. That was the same frustration we had with Obama during, you know, right. as the first couple of years of his, his presidency. It, it dawned on everybody, oh, he's not even right. fighting. Like for a public we, option. We, we didn't, yeah, for, exactly. Like for the for public an, option, great example. Like we didn't expect him to get everything. We just wanted him to start from what we promised and right. fight from that position. Exactly. What, and he didn't. Fight for it. Don't and go. And she won't. She'll do exactly the same thing. And, and so she's, that's, what, you know. yeah. that's what we were saying, too. Like, uh, yeah, she might be for a 55-year-old buy into Medicare, but it's not like she's going to fight for it. Yeah. Like, if someone passes it in the House and then it passes in the Senate and it comes to her desk, she might sign it. There are a lot of influential entities that are against that that have her on speed dial. That's that, that's exactly correct. So that's why so there's Ralph Nader's take on that. That makes all the sense in the world. That that's exactly what Bernie said. He was actually trying to move her even farther to the left in his endorsement speech. So he's setting her up to. It's great. I, I, it was good, what Bernie did, and everybody's acting like they're betrayed. Bernie betrayed me, but come on, yeah, like Bernie hasn't done enough. I know, like he hasn't done. A, he yeah, hasn't the since man the who 60s. came from nowhere. Yeah, Nobody right. knew about him. I know, and he's seventy. Four or five years old, he's flying around the country giving three speeches a day about income inequality. We were exhausted following him for like half a day. For half a day, we were exhausted. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> we left. He's like, he can't, he won't stop. We got to go. He, we actually left one of his speeches because he wouldn't <laughs> stop. We were like, I'm out of it. 
Anyway, here we go. Let's see if he's got anything else to say. Him 36 days to endorse Hillary Clinton. What does that say to you? Uh, it says he wanted to hold her feet to the fire in a platform committee for the Democratic uh, Party, and he got some good words on all these issues I just mentioned and more, mm -hmm. but that's not gonna be enough, and he knows it better than anybody. She should, she should now commit to send specific legislation within 100 days to the Congress after she's inaugurated in order to make sure that she meant what she said in terms of the Democratic platform. <laughs> Okay, so hopefully that was, we'll see. Well, her, fa her failure to deliver will empower the next round of activists and newer politicians. Yeah, and so yeah. what I'm saying, Progressive and what I, you know, people are wagging their finger trying to say, if you don't vote for Hillary, that's a vote for Trump. And I'll say, hey, I'll vote for Hillary. She has to come get my vote. Are you pro-fracking? I'm not voting for you. <laughs> Are you pro-TPP? I'm not voting for you. If you commit to being against those things, I might come around. I actually care about the environment. I actually care about climate change. I actually care about uh, workers. I actually care about our economy. I actually care about income inequality. These things are really important. So if you want me to vote and you think it's horrible, if you think it's horrible that Trump is going to become president, so horrible that I should vote for Hillary, why doesn't Hillary, if she's so afraid of Trump, also just say I'm, pr I'm against fracking? You're willing to let Trump be president so you could support fracking? Because that's what's coming down to. Right. Like I'll vote for you if you say you're against fracking and against the TPP and you put it in the platform. I'll vote for you. But you're willing to let Trump be president so you can defend fracking and the TPP. See, that's the way we should be looking at this argument. But that's not how people are looking at it. I say it's Hillary's fault if Trump becomes president because people like me don't vote for her. It's Hillary's fault for not coming to get our fucking vote. You're supposed to come get my vote. Oh, these guys are li li liberals. What do they want? What do they need for me to vote to get uh, for me to get their vote? They want you to be against fracking and they against the TPP and put it in the platform. No, I won't do it. Trump's going to be president. That's the decision they're making. So you're going to choose fracking and the TPP over me. And that gives Trump the presidency. It's like, I'd, I'd really like to be against Trump, but I'm pro-fracking. So if he becomes president, that's just the way it's going to be. So that's your fault. And that's the fault of Hillary. And that's the fault of the Democratic establishment. You don't have my vote. You got to come get it. Mm -hmm.